If you read on forums about video piling or heck any RF site, you'll know that there is always a discussion when it comes to adapters and extensions because that there is a loss incurred. But it seems that there isn't a whole lot of information about how much loss. I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy. In this video, I want to test some certain extensions and adapters to see how much loss they have. This is an Agilent Field Fox Vector Network Analyzer running a vector voltmeter, and I'll be using this to show how much loss there is in very common extension cables and adapters. Okay, when it comes to adapters, one of the first things that people think of is the RPSMA adapter, this little guy here. It simply makes SMA antennas fit on an RPSMA transmitter or receiver. Well, in order to measure this, we've got to zero this vector network analyzer. Obviously, there's going to be some cables attached to this that are going to incur some loss. So, first thing we're going to have to do is zero this. So now we take the cable loss and all the adapters out of it. And because I don't have too much RPSMA, I've got two adapters to screw together to make sure this is going to work. So let's screw them together and see what the loss is. Almost none. 0.1 dB of loss at 5.8 gigahertz. I'm not even gonna bother checking any other frequencies because, well, we don't use RPSMA adapters at any other frequencies, and that loss is all already neg eh, excuse me, negligible. So what about other adapters, such as the right angle adapter? How much loss is incurred with it? Okay, 0.4 dB, obviously more loss than the uh, SMA to RPSMA adapters. Is it a lot? Well, not really. 0.4 dB, you probably will never see a difference in your video. Okay, so what about a right angle adapter at a lower frequency, like say 2.4 gigahertz? Well, we've got to zero this thing again. Notice that we're 0.2 dB loss, less loss going through these cables. So. Remember, loss is proportional to frequency. We went from 5.8 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz and we gained 0.2 dB of strength. So longer runs are, if you're going to run a long run, it's, it's better to do it at a lower frequency. Or to translate, if you're running a lower frequency, longer runs of cable or more adapters are going to incur less loss. So we'll go back into here, zero that, and then screw on our adapter. 0.1 dB. Again, this is similar to the RPSMA adapters that I just tested. So we have seen a actually fairly big difference between um, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz when it comes to the right angle adapter. Well, what about adapters like this? This is a 45 degree adapter. This is actually the adapter that I include in the 5.8 gigahertz crosshair antenna. So let's screw that on and see where the adapter loss is. Okay, 5.8 gigahertz, our loss, 0.1 dB. I'd consider that negligible. But why do we have only a 0.1 dB loss at 5.8 gigahertz at 45, but we go up to 0.4 dB at a 90? Well, the reason is, is because this is a sharp bend inside here, and it's not necessarily perfect. There are ones that look like an elbow that are bent smoothly that will have a lot less loss. However, these are the ones that almost everybody uses because they're cheap and they're easy to find. But a 45 degree adapter, 0.1 dB, that's nothing to worry about. But what about extension cables? Okay, here I've attached a, the extension that comes with a 5.8 gigahertz pepper box. It's a small section of RG402. Very, very, very common cable used in antennas, considered a low loss cable. And at minus 0.2 dB, I would agree, very low loss. But what happens if we make it, say, a little bit longer? Again, approximately the same loss going from three inches to four inches, which is approximately the longest cable any of us really needs for a quadcopter or a set of goggles. So again, very little loss, not really a problem. I'd rather use that extension to move the antenna away from a vehicle or an antenna away from my goggles 
um, and take the loss than have other things in the uh, radiation pattern of the antenna. But what about a longer section? So that's four inches. What about a six inch section of low loss cable? Okay. 0.3 dB loss. Now that is a six inch section of an extremely low loss cable. These are com these cables are what I actually use to test equipment here in the shop. And it's the best cable I could find. Still, we're at 0.3 dB um, on only six inches at 5.8 gigahertz. So at 5.8 gigahertz, yeah, the length really begins to matter. Well, what about RG316 in a long run? All right, another common cable we use is RG316. Now, typically this isn't used so much by quadcopter pilots, but it's very frequently used by airplane pilots to move their antenna further away out onto the wing. This is an 18 inch section. I've taken off my two extension cables because they're no longer needed and then turned off the zeroing function. So all I'm going to read here is this piece of RG316 cable. As you can see, I'm at 1.7 dB of loss. Now this is actually significant. How significant? Well, it depends. If you're flying in close, you're not going to notice the difference. But for long range, that is going to affect your signal. However, when going for long range, it's usually better to go ahead and accept that kind of loss rather than have your antenna near other electronics because the purity of the radiation plot is more important than cable loss. There is one other thing to note about this. Again, we're at 5.8 gigahertz, but what about lower frequencies? Let's try 3.3 gigahertz or 3300 megahertz. We drop 0.4 dB, so still a fair amount of loss, but not, not nearly, not quite as significant. Still, it's better if I could avoid using the extension altogether, but if I'm going to move my antenna away from my transmitter, I'd rather take the loss and use the cable. Well, what about 2.4 gigahertz? One dB. This is typically considered the threshold whether you should use something or not. This is the threshold of whether you will actually notice it in a system. It's typically set to be one dB. So at long range, 2.4 gigahertz is an extension cable of 18 inches of matter. Well, very little. But what about one of the most common long range video frequencies, 1.3 gigahertz. Okay, now we're down to 0.7 dB. So as you can see, the lower the frequency, the less loss there is in the cable. But we have one more thing to try. What about a different quality cable? 